ओके हे गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू कैन यू योर मी बैक देयर सो आई एम सुरोजित सुरोजित रॉय आई एम द को फाउंडर ऑफ अ स्टूडियो कॉल्ड फायर स्कोर इंटरएक्टिव बट टुडे आई कम टू यू रिप्रेजेंटिंग क्रेजी लैब्स इंडिया फॉर दोज ऑफ यू दैट डोंट नो आई गिव यू अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑन क्रेजी लैब्स ऑन माई सेल्फ ऑन द वर्क वे डूइंग एंड देन Once we do that, since it's career day and we're talking about careers today, uh, I will give you a brief intro on my own career, uh, my learnings, my failures, and what got me to this point, um, and how does that impact the work we do today? And hopefully, there'll be some key learnings that you'll be able to take away from this, and I think that would be the best end result from this. At the end of the session, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather keep it shorter and keep it interactive. So, if you have any questions in the middle, please feel free to ask. um but at the end of the session i wouldn't mind doing a q and a um and also going over some of your games if you guys are working in the games industry if you've made games uh, we'd be more than happy to sit here play them review them have a group discussion even and uh, you know try and see if we can get something out of that as well all right so it's a pleasure to meet you so like i said i'm surajit roy co-founder of uh, fire squad interactive uh but i am now the head of studio at crazy labs india Um, at Firesco Interactive, we were the creators of three very large hit games: Soap Cutting, Acrylic Nails, and Hair Dye. Um, we worked on all of these games with one publisher, and that publisher was Crazy Labs. We built a very deep relationship. Rather than working with many different publishers, we built a very deep relationship with one, and that is what really helped us enhance our own work and take things forward for the company. Um, during this journey of making these three hit games and working with Crazy Labs. we also started two accelerators incubator Accel accelerators where we fund young studios uh, and help them train them mentor them in the art of making hyper casual games these accelerators are based in mumbai and one is based right here in hyderabad um the agenda that we're going to talk about is basically um an introduction to what we're doing at crazy labs or uh, i will take you through my career and then we'll go over the crazy hubs program the accelerators that i was talking about because we feel that there is a big opportunity for young entrepreneurs or students graduates freshers in the industry to make a real name for yourself in the hyper casual space it's a unique opportunity that came about about 3 years ago but that opportunity still exists today and we are seeing that success with some of our partners young guys and girls who've just got into the industry who we've been able to mentor and train and take them to the next level and have major success in the industry so brief introduction about crazy labs i know if some of you guys have sat for our presentations before you've already seen this slide but uh for those of you that haven't i'm going to take you through uh, what we do and um, you know some of our accomplishments in the industry we are one of the top 5 publishers of mobile games worldwide we have been so for the last 5 years we have over 5.6 billion downloads across the entire portfolio of our games or uh, 250 monthly active users and we have a, a developer network of over 350 developer or uh, developers or studios worldwide that we work with to produce these games or uh, now if any of you are familiar with the hyper casual model you understand that we work with a large number of studios and from that work that we do with all of these studios some of those studios are able to get success and build a hit game with us um some of those hit games that we've had uh go from asmr slicing tie dye acrylic nails soap cutting um hair dye and many 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 more um you can always go to our portfolio and check out our entire list of games so the hit games that i was responsible for from india uh through fire score interactive are soap cutting acrylic nails and hair dye each of these games so far has amassed over 100 million downloads worldwide and none of these games are dead yet the common myth with hyper casual games is that the games die fast that three months in nobody is playing them but that is not true uh, especially with the games that crazy labs does and publishes we are known for a certain category of games but that cat those categories are expanding now even um but these three games that you see which i i had the privilege of working on um are still going very strong today so like i said i would like to give you a brief introduction on my career and uh, hopefully there are some learnings from my own failures from my own mistakes and of uh, maybe from some of our successes as well so when i was young uh, i was in college it was around maybe 15 years or so ago and uh, esports wasn't really a thing gaming was like frowned upon uh, if i told my mom i wanted to play games make games it was like oh are you crazy 
Um, and I think that's the story for most of us growing up, right? Like, why are you wasting your time sitting at the computer, sitting on your phone, you know, insulting your friends, etc. cetera, um, when you could be, you know, going to college or making a life for yourself. So while I did attend a little bit of college, during the evenings, I would go to the cyber cafe, uh, gather up a bunch of friends, and we would sit and play Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike was like a favorite game of everyone, but slowly we evolved and started playing a different game, a strategy game called Dota. Now, this game was in the very nascent stages of, uh, uh, in terms of the number of users that played, but uh, we were starting to uh, see a lot of traction with the number of players, teams, gamers that would come and compete with us in tournaments. And so, uh, a, a very bubbling, large community was building in India around esports, around Dota, around Counter-Strike, and these other games. This is where my career in gaming started. I wasn't always a game developer. I was more of a gamer, and more of a hardcore gamer. So when you look at hyper-casual games and a game like Dota, of course, you see they are worlds apart. And I'm going to try to take you through that journey of mine from a gamer to a game developer and from hardcore gaming to hyper-casual games. So um, as we were playing these tournaments, uh, it was almost every month there was a new tournament. We would start traveling around the country. Uh, we, from, uh, based in Bombay, but we played these tournaments mostly in Pune, Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Delhi. So we would travel around the country playing tournaments, trying to earn prize money, trying to win them, uh, but mostly we were just playing for pride. At the end of the day, there wasn't so much money in it. At that time, you couldn't have a career um, playing games or in esports, and so I had to really kind of think, you know, what is the next step? If the market isn't ready for what I want to do today, then what do I do next? And I think during that time, we reached, uh, not, it wasn't just me, there were a number of us in the same boat who were trying to figure out if we can't be gamers and build a career for ourselves, then what is the next step? Where do we go from here? Because this, we were so passionate about playing games, we grew up with games, we grew up with uh, all sorts of games, and that's all we really wanted to do. And everyone kept telling us we're just wasting our time. But that's not true. Uh, at least that's not what we felt. We always felt like we were moving forward in some way or the other, whether we were playing games or just discussing strategies or traveling the country, uh, there was something new to learn at every step of the way. So um, having kind of given up on my esports career as a gamer at that time, uh, I started discussing with my uh, teammates, you know, what are we going to do now? You know, what's next for us? Because if we aren't going to be gamers, then we need to figure out something else in the same industry. So we went out and started a company called AFK Gaming. I was co-founder of AFK Gaming, which is an esports startup, which still exists today, and is run by uh, my talented co-founder, who, uh, who is running it with some new partners. But I exited the company after approximately one year, um, because I, by that point, even I realized that uh, going in the esports, being in the esports space might not necessarily be for me. Uh, it had been almost seven years where I was in the esports space in some way or the other, but uh, the industry itself, the vertical of esports, um, hadn't picked up in India as yet. It was still very small. There wasn't funding like there is today. Players were not earning salaries like they do today. Um, so I had to take a very difficult decision, and that led to uh, my exit from the esports industry. But uh, I still hold a very fond place in my heart for esports and gaming across the board, so maybe one day I'll get back into it. But uh, the end of my esports career led me to realize that, hey, you know what, the industry is not where I want it to be today. Um, maybe there isn't enough money, for money in it, aren't enough investors, not enough people excited about it. If I go tell my mom, it's still not a big deal to her. She's like, you're still wasting your time. Right? So uh, we said, okay, so if the gamers aren't the ones whose careers are succeeding right now, if the uh, organizations hosting esports tournaments are not the big ones yet, then where do we go from here? And uh, so I started thinking. And the best solution I could come up with was that, you know what, the games we play are the ones that drive all of the engagement. They drive all of the, the excitement around the tournaments. What is the core of all of esports? It's the games we play. So the next step that I decided to take in the industry was to actually go out there and start making games. And of course, being a hardcore gamer, being from esports, my first instinct was, let's make the next Dota. Let's make the next Counter-Strike. Um, and I was some 22-year-old kid who didn't have any idea what the hell I was thinking about. So um, that's where I started. And that's, I think, where a lot of people start as well, 
trying to make maybe the next big thing, the next big game. And I had honestly, I had no clue what it would take to even make a game. I had no experience in Unity, no experience in game design. I just had a career, small career as a college student in esports. And what that did though was, as I started going out there looking for opportunities, looking for jobs, I happened to come across a job in a, in a company that wasn't doing games as such. They were doing software for in-flight entertainment. That means those little screens you see on planes uh, when nobody actually plays the games. Uh, that's, that's the kind of space I ended up in. Um, I interviewed there, uh, told them about my past in esports. They said, okay, guy looks like a gamer. He's excited about games. Let's put him in here. Uh, we have some games we want to make and let's see what happens from there. I worked at this company for about four years, starting off as a creative writer. There was no such position as game designer at the company. I had no idea that this position existed at all. So I was hired, put in the role as a creative writer, and made to come up with ideas and document new pitches and concepts, um, and still no role as a game designer at the company existed. Eventually, I had to convince the company to re rename my position as game designer, because I finally found out that this position exists in the real world. Um, after four years at this company, making games for in-flight entertainment, obviously, I felt like, what am I doing here? Because uh, nobody is playing my games. I'm sit sitting here, spent four years uh, doing this passionately, giving my everything, but ultimately nobody was playing my games because they were running on the small devices on planes, and you know how it is. Maybe two kids will play it every year, I'm sure. Um, so. Uh, while I was doing this company, the urge to actually do something bigger started picking up inside of me. And uh, I partnered with a friend who I was working with at the company. We left the company together. Uh, we raised money and we started what was my first endeavor in mobile game development. Uh, to give you some more context, I still did not have any technical knowledge. I still did not have any official game design education. I still did not have any experience in Unity, but I was really determined to get into the space and try and make the next big game. And uh, I, I didn't for many years after this, but uh, that was the ambition, that was the goal when we started. Uh, the company we started was called Bioff Studios. It was my first big failure in the gaming industry. And when I say big failure, I don't mean that, hey, uh, you know, something bad happened at the company, or, uh, there, there was some negative impact. In fact, when I say failure, I say it in the most positive way possible. The company itself was built around making mobile games for the Western market, and uh, we, were doing, we were very inspired by the success of Candy Crush. Obviously, who wouldn't be? That game was making $1.5 million a day. So when you see those kind of numbers, and you're sitting and making games for in-flight entertainment, there's a vast gap between where you are and where you want to be. You know? And so I, we wanted to figure out how we can close that gap and the only way to do it was to first jump in head first and see what we can accomplish doing this. Um, Bioff Studios was, was a startup that lasted about two years. Uh, we had four or five games, multiple of them were featured on both the app stores. We had a lot of organic traction and downloads, but ultimately we were not monetizing our users. We were not making money from the games we were building. And so as a business, while things were fun and we were having a good time, and uh, our games were getting noticed and played. As a business, we were still failing. And I think, um, ultimately, while accomplishing one of the goals that we started with, which is to get our games played by more people, the, uh, the real learning from here was that, in the end, when you start a business, it's a business. It has to make money, it has to survive, it has to sustain, it has to be profitable. And the, the games industry um, is built on profits. You know, it's, we're, not, we're not a VC-based industry. We're not raise money, spend it all, raise money, spend it all, raise money, spend it all, sell the company. We're not that. Most game companies are profit-based businesses. And this was my first big learning uh, from this failed startup. Uh, we wanted to, we had to, had to figure out how to make a profitable, sustainable business. And uh, this was probably the biggest learning experience of my life. While I only have one line written there, failed game startup, but maximum learnings. Uh, this, this journey of failure is what actually led to all of the learnings that we took to my next startup. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next slide as well. Uh, the next startup we co-founded was called Firescore Interactive, which we already spoke about briefly. Um, 
but I'll, I'll take you through the journey a little bit uh, in a bit more detail. So Firesco Interactive was started by uh, uh, Karan Kehrajani, my co-founder, and myself in 2018. Um, I had taken a three-month break from the industry after uh, the last startup failed, came back, and um, really wanted to give it another shot. At this point, hyper-casual games as a vertical was picking up in the gaming industry. Um, what are hyper-casual games? We'll come to that a bit later. But uh, hyper-casual games were starting to pick up big time. I think real money gaming around the same time was also picking up. Uh, we started the company as a real money gaming startup. Uh, we thought, you know, there's, there's uh, MPL that hadn't released their app yet. Maybe we'll beat them to the market. We'll raise some money and we'll probably compete with them. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. And what happened was we reached the end of the line for the company again. And within one year of failing a startup and restarting, I was back at the same point where my startup was almost dead again. And this was, a, again, a very challenging situation, a very difficult circumstance for any startup to go through because you're anyway running out of money all the time. And when you finally reach the end of the road and all the money is gone, you don't have anywhere else to go. So we were about three months in, hadn't paid any salaries. Um, people were leaving left, right, and center. Serious conversations were going on on a daily basis about whether, we, whether we, we really needed someone or whether we were okay with letting them go or whether they wanted to stay or not. Uh, and during this time, again, these difficult and challenging times are probably the biggest learning experiences as you go through as a co-founder. When you come out of those situations, you look back and think, wow, survived that, and now I know how to tackle it the next time. But um, Fiasco uh, was struggling, like I said, out of money. Um, but during this time, we saw an article uh, in, on Pocket Gamer, I think it was, uh, which said that Crazy Labs, an Israeli publisher, was investing $500,000 into the gaming market, looking for studios like us to partner with. And uh, it was just a cold email that we sent, actually. It was a desperate moment. Uh, everyone wants to leave the company. Um, nobody's get, getting paid. And we were like, do everything we can to try and see how we can sustain and keep the company alive. So we sent out a bunch of cold emails. One of them happened to be to Crazy Labs. Um, and it just so happens that we got a response. That response led to us getting a contract which allowed us to keep the company alive for about a few more months. And it was in that moment of desperation, of almost giving up one more time, where we kind of defined who we wanted to be. Because when your back is against the wall and you have nowhere else to go, you can only go in one direction. You can't go further back. So we were already at the bottom, but we were so determined to go back up and this, this last grace opportunity from Crazy Labs. And I must thank one person, Moria Goldstein, who really helped us get through this difficult period, provided us with the opportunity to survive, and also gave us a lot of direction on what kind of games in hypercasual would work, what wouldn't, and started training us and mentoring us in building hypercasual games. Um, this led to the creation of our first hit game, which was called Soap Cutting. Soap Cutting was a trend on YouTube. Uh, it's an ASMR trend where people uh, who have anxiety or who are, um, you know, who are not may may maybe looking for something satisfying to do uh, were putting up videos of themselves cutting pieces of soap. Um, and it was a, a very satisfying activity and it was getting very popular and viral around the world. We noticed this trend and uh, decided that we would try and make a game on it. And it just so happens that that game tested beautifully and eventually became a number one game worldwide. During, uh, during Christmas period 2019, this is, about, this is literally one month, exactly one month after we were having our shutdown conversations. In November, we were at IGDC begging people for investment. In December, soap cutting was the number one game on Christmas Day worldwide. It, that lasted for seven days, and we eventually became the number one app uh, on Christmas, on, during the Christmas and New Year's period um, in over 20 countries. The, uh, I have a, I actually have a screenshot which I didn't put up in the slide, which, which had soap cutting, uh, then YouTube, uh, then uh, Facebook, then Snapchat, and then Disney. And that was, the, that was the top five on Christmas Day when America woke up in 2019. Um, thank you. Um, the, the story itself, just that period, those two months, probably the defining months for our company and for our futures. 
but we didn't even realize at that time. You know, for us, it was just, okay, we're surviving. We're surviving, we're happy, we get to come to office every day, and nobody wants to leave anymore. Um, but what that did was, over the next three to six months, the company started making a lot of revenue from the game. Hypercasual was known for very quick revenue. Uh, games with, were known for shorter life cycles, but it turned out that soap cutting had a much longer life cycle than we ever imagined. Um, the game itself started generating revenue, allowed us to hire a couple more good people, uh, allowed us to keep our employees happy, and eventually, within four months, it led to our second hit game, which was Acrylic Nails. Acrylic Nails, and I have another screenshot of this, uh, where Acrylic Nails didn't make the number one spot. Uh, Acrylic Nails was only behind Among Us in October 2021, and we were just the number two game, but it was, again, a big accomplishment because Among Us was one of the biggest games worldwide. Um, and it was all during pandemic season, so many more people were playing games than ever, right? Um, and Acrylic Nails was, was our next big hit, um, which eventually, again, led to our third hit game a few months from there, which was called Head Eye. All three games have now amassed over 100 million downloads, like I said, but um, it, was, it wasn't the end, it wasn't, uh, that, that wasn't even the most exciting part of the story. During this time, while we were, while we had come out of this, these difficult moments, uh, for me and my co-founder both, we had had long careers in the industry already since we were younger, and you know, uh, the success of our games was, for us, it was just the beginning. It was just an opportunity to stay in the industry, stay alive, and continue to do this. But Crazy Labs said, you know what, guys? You have something here. There's something you can do that can be scaled, that can be taken to other people. And as a publisher who wants to work with many studios, who wants to have many more successes, why don't we start something together where we can mentor, train, fund studios like yourselves who are in maybe dire financial conditions, who have the motivation to work in hyper-casual games, who just want to come to office every day, work with your friends, and make something that you enjoy making. This is what we wanted to do and take to other people. And Crazy Labs was the first one to come and say, you know what, guys, let's do this. Let's build an accelerator. Let's start funding studios. Let's start finding the talent in the country, because India has a lot of talent. And we know with IGDC this year, over 4,000 people have showed up. And I think that's a great indicator of where the industry is going, right? So we decided that we would start uh, a publishing platform called the Crazy Hubs, uh, which is an accelerator where we would fund studios, young studios, one person, two people, three people, three friends, uh, who want to come and make a career out of hyper-casual games and have similar success to ours. Um, as all of this was happening, uh, and some of you may know this already, Crazy Labs uh, called us one day and said, guys, everything we're doing is working out really well. Let's take this relationship also to the next level. So in 2021, September, um, maybe we started conversations in April, May, but by September 2021, uh, Crazy Labs had acquired Firescore Interactive. And of course, it's a life-changing event for our team, for us, um, and it kind of, again, it took us to another, another level that we never thought that we would ever get to. And it was only three years ago that we were struggling, um, you know, and, and we had no idea where we were going next. And it's funny how things happen because, um, Last time I was at IGDC, I came here as the co-founder of Firesco Interactive, looking for investment, looking for funding, literally begging people, give us a deal, help us stay alive. Um, when IGDC got over, we went back home. Of course, soap cutting and everything else happened. Today, I've come back to IGDC for the first time. And today, I've come back as the investor, as the publisher. And I've come back to try and help you guys um, find your space in the industry and maybe help replicate the success that we had um, through the work that you're doing. And as the publisher, it's obviously a great privilege to be in this position and be able to mentor, guide, and train other studios who want to come and have similar success to ours. And I will take you through what Crazy Hubs is doing, what we do with the accelerators a little bit um, in the next couple of slides. So, play the video. All right, so, so what is Crazy Hubs? Um, firstly, what is an accelerator? What is an incubator? Um, accelerators, incubators are places where you go to, where you physically go and sit and work in that space around a number of people, peers, other teams, other studios, and the accelerator itself is investing in you and supporting you financially to be able to do what you want to do. Um, in this case, our accelerator is built around hyper-casual games. 
and we want to train and mentor studios in the art of building hyper-casual games. And when I say art, it's not all art, it's business. A lot of it is business, a lot of it is art, a lot of it is game design. So we train you across the board uh, in hyper-casual games with the ultimate goal of making you a successful studio. Uh, while Crazy Labs is, uh, exists worldwide and we have, many, uh, we have many offices around the world, our hubs in Mumbai and Hyderabad are very geared to hands-on training of Indian studios. Uh, and we are looking for youngsters, not just youngsters, we're looking for everyone who wants to get into hyper-casual and who's looking for an opportunity to get funding and potentially to have the next number one game worldwide. Um, in the Crazy Hubs Accelerators, we provide our training and mentorship, hands-on guidance, not just on the business of hyper-casual, but also in Unity, advanced shaders, or advanced Unity sessions, uh, again, advanced business sessions, and, and a complete understanding of the hyper-casual market. Most importantly in hyper-casual, uh, we need to understand the process of how the games are made, how they're published, how they're launched, and how they're scaled. And at Crazy Hubs, on a day-to-day -day basis, over a four-month period, we will train you to understand all of this. And while we do that, you will also get paid to do it. Um, we want to fund you and sustain your studio. We want you to not have the struggles that Firesco Interactive did. We want you to be comfortable. We want you to be happy and motivated to work. And through this process of training, mentorship, and funding you, we will hope to create the next big hyper-casual hit. Um, we obviously have access to industry-leading technology, tools, services that help you get into hyper-casual and help you produce those hit games. Um, in fact, just, uh, just last month, there was a 22-year-old kid called Chaitanya, who some of you may have met at the conference already, who released a game called Lunchbox Ready, which is already a top 50 game worldwide, and is soon going to reach the top 10, uh, soon going to cross the top 10 barrier as well. Life-changing moment for somebody like Chaitanya, who basically was looking for a way to survive in the industry, to live his dreams, and as a solo developer through the Crazy Hubs program, thanks to obviously a lot of his hard work itself, and also the support that was being provided to him by Crazy Labs and the, and the Accelerator, we were able to create this massive hit game from just one guy sitting in the Hyderabad Accelerator. You know, and that, those are the inspiring stories that we started the Crazy Hubs uh, to do in the first place. And, it's, and it's, we're starting to see uh, an, an, incredible, an incredible number of uh, potential hit games and hit games come out of the Hubs program. We recently had another hit game called The President, if you've played it. Um, it came from the South Africa hub, and my colleague Wamil at the back there was, respons was very much responsible for the uh, production of this hit game. He is uh, our hub lead, and also we are colleagues, and we work very much together on the hubs and all of our business activities in Crazy Labs. Um, we are also able to provide a lot more than just what I can put in this slide, um, because the accelerator in Mumbai runs out of our Mumbai office, where the Firescore team works. So the team responsible for producing those three big hit games that I told you about are also responsible for mentoring and training and helping you guys succeed. In Hyderabad, we're working with a company called Street Lamp Games, if you've heard of Deepak Gurijala. Um, he is the founder of Street Lamp, and he's the one that owns and leads our hub operations in Hyderabad. Another massively talented and successful studio in India, and if some of you know him, uh, the Hyderabad hub is a great place to go and check out what they do, and. Uh, Maybe apply and see if that could be something that works for you. Um, I already mentioned most of what's on this slide, so I'm going to move to the next slide. So the hubs itself is, uh, the registrations for the hubs are already open. We are looking for studios or solo developers or individuals who want, who want to get into hyper-casual and who want to build success for themselves. It's a physical program, so we would expect you to come to the hub either in Mumbai or Hyderabad for a four-month period and work from there hand-in-hand -hand with us in, in the attempt to make the next big hit game or to make the next Chaitanya story. You know, that's, that's what we really care about and that's what we really want to do. Um, anyone who joins the hub and makes a hit game with us is also entitled to a very significant profit share, which is what leads to the life-changing moments, of course. So, Applications are open on the Crazy Labs website, crazylabs.com slash crazyhubs. Uh, you can always apply and come on board. Um, and at the same time, while we have our hubs activities, 
we are also recruiting very aggressively for our uh, internal development team. As of now, we are looking for Unity developers and Unity technical artists. So I think I, I didn't want to take up too much time just talking about myself. Uh, the idea here was I'll give you a brief on my career um, since it's career day, um, on the journey that we've gone through, on the opportunities that we have for you guys to work with us, and maybe open it up to questions and see if you guys have anything uh, that you might want to ask through the journey that might help you succeed in your career. So let's chat. I'm going to open it up to questions. Thank you. Thank you.